very warm welcome to those of you who are joining us online. Our text today is Hebrews 11.6 and Galatians chapter 6 verse 9. We're looking at the teaching of Jesus and the apostles on a life God rewards and this is part two in this series. And the context is not the rewards we get in this life. At the New Testament, eight Greek words are translated into our English word for reward. And the word reward occurs 43 times in the New International Version of the Bible. And some references mention rewards that will be given in this life, but most talk about those that will be given for eternity. So I'm going to read the first text, which is Hebrews 11, 6. And without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. In the second text, Galatians 6, 9, don't get tired of helping others. You will be rewarded when the time is right if you don't give up. We've been looking at the Christian will be rewarded for four things, for faithful giving, giving of our finances, giving of our time, for faithful praying, for faithful service and for faithful endurance. And today we're looking at faithful praying. So many people prepare for old age and there's nothing wrong with that, it's the sensible thing to do. They want to leave an inheritance for their children or their family or friends or bless their church generously in their wills or other organisations that are dear and close to them. But Jesus and the apostles taught us that death is literally just the starting gate of our true existence. Think of a dot and a line, and the graphic will come up for those who are watching on screen. But think about a dot and a line, and everything that happens in that dot will influence the line that will go on for eternity. That's something that Jesus taught, that everything we do in this life has an eternal consequence. Now those who trust in Christ need not worry what greets us the other side of our last heartbeat. When we stand before the judgment seat of Christ the Bible talks about, it does not determine our salvation. That was determined by Christ's sacrifice on our behalf. All of our sins are forgiven and we shall never be condemned for them. That's a promise given in the scriptures and Romans 8.1 is a text there if you want to look at that particular one. So when we stand before the judgment seat of Christ, the primary focus is not do we have eternal life, will we be given entrance into God's kingdom, The primary focus is what will God reward us with. For our service in this life, our faithful giving, our faithful praying, our faithful service, our faithful endurance, they're not wages. God doesn't pay us for what we do for him. But the Bible says that he loves us so much that he wants to reward us, he wants to bless us in eternity based on what we have done for him here in this life. He is a rewarder of those who earnestly seek him. And we are told to not give up. We're trying to help others because he will reward us for it. If you follow Christ, you are one of the ones he has gone ahead to prepare mansions for in his kingdom. In eternity, everybody will have a resurrected body. Our new bodies will be immortal. They will never experience death, sickness or pain. 1 Corinthians 15 tells us about this process. And Paul wrote to the church in Philippi and said this, who, talking about Christ, by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control, will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. So we should not look at the judgment seat of Christ as God judging our sins, but rather as God rewarding us for our lives. The Bible says we will have to give an account of ourselves and part of this will be answering for the sins we have committed. 
Why did you do that? But it won't be to condemn us because they've already been forgiven. We will have to talk about our behaviour in his church. The apostles warn us about a lot. Do we serve him well? Do we build up the church in unity? Do we edify, help and serve others? Or do we cause mischief and division? At the judgment seat of Christ, believers are rewarded based on how faithfully they have served Christ. There's many scriptures we could look at which talk about that. 1 Corinthians 9, 4 to 27, 2 Timothy 2, 5. Some of the things we will be judged on are how well we have obeyed the great commission that Jesus gave to us. Did we do our part in seeking to spread this gospel to the four corners of this earth? And not everybody is sent out to be a missionary or a preacher or stuff like that. Sometimes it's just by serving well in your local church so that your local church can have a great influence far beyond its own borders. How victorious were we over sin? How well did we control our tongues? That's something James warns us about, that there will be consequences for those who have not guarded their tongues, those who have used it to tear down others, to bring division in his church, to be a criticizer rather than an encourager. Those who just use this to spread so much toxic poison, James tells us that one day we will have to stand before Christ and Jesus himself said we would have to give an account for every single word we have spoken. Now if you really have faith and believe that one day we will stand before Christ and give an account, it makes you want to guard what comes out of here, doesn't it? Especially when it's to do with his church, which he calls, calls his holy temple, which he calls sacred, which he warns us, do not tear down and bring down the church for which Jesus Christ died for. The Bible speaks of believers receiving crowns for different things based on how faithfully they served Christ. The various crowns are described in the second letter of Timothy, in James, in 1 Peter, and in the book of Revelation. And James 1.12 is a good summary of how we should think about the judgment seat of Christ. He says, Blessed is the man who perseveres under trial, because when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. So if it helps, write this down. Salvation is God's free gift when people trust him and seek him and puts their faith into action making a difference in the world he rewards them when they stand before the judgment seat of christ to give an account for their lives so i want us to look at faithful praying today we looked at faithful giving last week and today we're looking at faithful praying jesus said and when you pray you shall not be like the hypocrites for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets that they may be seen by men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when you pray, go into your room, and when you have shut your door, pray to your Father who is in the secret place, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Therefore do not be like them, for your Father knows the things you have need of before you ask him. And then he taught us what's known as the Lord's Prayer. What he says when you pray, note the assumption is that all Christians will be prayerful people. Go to your room, shut the door to distractions, and open the door to Jesus Christ. Prayer is developing a personal relationship with him. It's the secret place. And I find it incredible that the Bible teaches us that if we are faithful in praying, that God will one day reward us openly for eternity at the judgment seat of Christ. I find it interesting that the disciples, they said, well, how do we pray? They asked Jesus that question, exactly how do we pray? And he told them how to pray. Our Father, in other words, we're praying to a person. 
We're not praying to an impersonal force, some energy or some spiritual being that we don't know. But we are praying to somebody who we call our Father. Somebody who loves us as a Heavenly Father. He says, say, hallowed be your name. This is praise. We give praise for who God is, that he's revealed himself in the name of Jesus Christ. We say, holy is your name, Lord Jesus. We pray for priorities. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's probably a prayer I've prayed more than any other in my entire life. Whenever I pray for myself, whenever I pray for any church I've been minister of or any situation I've had responsibility in, my prayer has always been, your will be done, Lord. You have shown us by your Holy Spirit you will lead us and direct your people. Your will be done. He said to pray for provision. Give us this day our daily bread that we ask God to meet our needs. That we say, Lord, you are faithful and given to us. I trust you. That as we seek you, you are a rewarder of those who diligently seek you. We're to pray for pardon. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive our trespassers. That we're to ask for forgiveness because we're all going to stumble in many ways, James tells us in this life. So when we become aware of something, okay, Lord, I made the error, I made that mistake, I shouldn't have said that, I shouldn't have done that. We say, Lord, forgive me. And the Bible teaches us that he does. To pray for protection. Lord, do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. And then to end again with praise. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And Jesus gave us a warning. He said that if you forgive men their trespasses, when they trespass against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. We should be very quick to forgive as Christians because at the judgment seat of Christ, we can lose so much if we've been unforgiving people. There is a direct connection between the things you do for Christ on earth and the great rewards he has promised in heaven as the result of faithful praying. Remember our two texts, and without faith it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists, and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. In Galatians 6.9, don't get tired of helping others, you will be rewarded when the time is right, if you do not give up. So in closing, I just want to give you some things how it's good to be faithful in prayer. I have a whiteboard in my office and sometimes I write things down and on the white board I have vision. I pray for personal vision for my family, for the church and the different responsibilities I have. And my, will is all, my prayer is always the same to start with, Lord your will be done. When I pray for the, my children, not that I want to impose my will upon them, but Lord your will be done in their lives. Your grace come upon them. Your mercy be shown to them. Your Holy Spirit reveal yourself to them. And the same for myself and also obviously for the church. And then sometimes you'll pray for specific things or specific people, either in the church or in your family who you want to pray for. Sometimes you can go through the church address book and just pray for people. And there's many biblical prayers you can turn to. Colossians is a good one, Colossians 1 where Paul says, these are the things I'm praying for you, and you can take that prayer, and you can pray for that over the people in the church prayer book. Personally, I pray, Lord, give me wisdom with the situations, the decisions I have to make personally, and in any responsibilities I have. Give me wisdom, Lord, to be able to see the different implications of the decisions that must be made. But most of all, give me the leading of your Holy Spirit. Let me be confident that as we do this, that we are stepping out in faith, obeying what you have called us to do. Give me anointing, Lord. Give me understanding. Give me time, Lord, to do those things you have called me to do in this earth. I've realised that time 
is one of the most precious resources we have in this life and it is so limited. When I think of the times and just recently also when I could have so easily lost my life a wrong way, a few inches either way, your neck could have snapped in an accident or different things that could have happened. And I say, Lord, do not let me leave this world until I have finished what you have called me to do. I want to be like the Apostle Paul who will be able to say, I've run the race, I've finished it, I've been faithful to do everything that God called me to do in Christ Jesus. Pray within the parameters of God's word. I pray for relevance that, Lord, when I speak, help what I say be relevant. I know that in the fallen world we are living in, many of the things we talk about as Christians, people just seem as irrelevant. But what's that really got to do with our daily lives? But the gospel of Jesus Christ is relevant to every human being. And then when we become a Christian, we need to learn how to live and to walk with you. So pray within the parameters of God's word. Enter his presence with thanksgiving and praise. Confess your sins. Identify with God's purpose. Your will be done. And recognize that only by his Holy Spirit can hearts be changed. You cannot change anybody's heart. Neither can I. Only the Holy Spirit can do that. And only by his word can his kingdom be revealed. I like it that the Bible talks about the foolishness of preaching. That this great eternal plan that God has, that is the method by which he's decided to reveal his kingdom. Think about the Great Commission. He didn't say he was going to send angels. He said to the church, you go, preach this gospel. And as you go, I will be with you even to the end of this age. And these signs will follow you. And you see the miracles and the things that will happen when we preach the gospel. Pray for mercy and favour. Bless people in order to be blessed. And pray for the harvest of souls. Pray for the town we live in. Pray for our community. Pray for the mission fields of those we support. And also pray for labourers. That was one of the specific prayers Jesus said. When he said, look at the harvest, it's plentiful. But pray for labourers to go into that harvest field. And when you've prayed for these things faithfully, believe it. Believe that without faith it is impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists. And that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. And don't get tired of helping others because you will be rewarded when the time is right if you don't give up. Everybody gets discouraged sometimes. I certainly have at times in my ministry when I think, Lord, nobody appreciates anything we do. Have you ever felt like that? I'm sure you have in your personal life, sometimes in your work and sometimes even in the church. We can have seasons and times when we feel like that. And when we do, remember that God is recording everything we do for him in his kingdom. He's not going to pay us a wage for what we do for him, but he loves us so much that he's going to reward us eternally for every act of service. He's going to reward us for our faithful giving, our faithful praying, our faithful service, and our faithful endurance. And we shall continue this next time. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your great love for us. That, Lord, the things we do for you are not in vain, but they count for eternity. That your love is so great for us. You said to us that even if we give a cup of water to a thirsty person, you will reward us for it in eternity that no act is too small that goes under your notice. But Lord, the things we do for you, you love us so much you will bless us with the gracious gifts in eternity that will be ours to enjoy forever. 
And Lord, in eternity, our natures will be totally changed. There will be no envy, no jealous people who will look one to the other and say, God gave you so much more than he gave me. Instead, people will look at one another and say, bless you for your faithful service to the Lord. In the fallen earth, we were all a part of. And that Lord, we will respect and honour each other in eternity. So Lord, help us be faithful in this life. In Jesus' name, Amen.
we say together the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And may the blessing of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day, and remain with you now and for always. In the name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. 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 And Amen.